What's up, guys? This is uh, Tai Zen from PrisonOfFreedom.com. It's a blog where we talk about the tools, the techniques, and the strategies that help people find freedom uh, in their lives. And um, right now, um, I just got back from the, um, I just left the uh, Texas Bitcoin conference, and I discovered that we had a uh, fake journalist come out in Newsweek claiming that she had found the real Satoshi Nakamoto the inventor and founder and creator of Bitcoin, right? So I have this um, article in front of me. And by the way, a lot of you guys, uh, I was surprised uh, how many people recognize us, uh, me and my buddy uh, Leon uh, Fu in the Maserati from the uh, video that we shot about what is uh, Nextcoin. And uh, so we had a lot of people approach us and say hello to us at the Texas uh, Bitcoin conference. Um, the first uh, Bitcoin conference they had in uh, Texas, which was in um, uh, South uh, Austin. And um, we had a lot of people comment and talk about how um, I went from uh, uh, from a broadcasting from a Maserati to uh, broadcasting from a train station. Actually, I'm not in a train station in some of those videos. I'm actually at, most of them are at airports. Like right now, I'm at um, Boston uh, Logan Airport. So... I just uh, wanted to talk a little bit about this uh, fake journalist who found a fake Satoshi Nakamoto, okay? Uh, this fake journalist's name is uh, Leah McGrath Goodman. I'm looking at her uh, Twitter profile, by the way, if you want to follow along with me. So she claims to be the senior writer and finance editor for Newsweek. So what happened is Newsweek went out of business due to the internet, just like Bitcoin is going to put the banks out of business eventually, okay? So what happened is they were out of business. They, uh, at their peak, uh, Newsweek was printing 3.3 million uh, um, magazines a month or, um, what is it, a month or a week here. Um, they had a circulation of 3.3 million, okay? And they died out in 2012. They finally closed the doors and stopped uh, printing the physical edition and just only had the online edition. Well, they got bought out by another company called IBT Media. And when IBT Media took over, they wanted to relaunch the physical edition of Newsweek since it was a uh, popular Newsweek magazine before the Internet destroyed it. Okay, So in their feature magazine and their launch magazine, when they launched, uh, relaunched uh, the, the, the first physical publication of Newsweek, they decided to sensationalize their launch and their release of their first magazine after they closed down in 2012. And what they did was they put a, a uh, uh, most of you guys have seen already, the black picture, uh, black and red and white cover that was very dramatic and it had um, the anonymous face of the founder of Bitcoin on there. And the, in bold print it said, Bitcoin's face because they claimed that apparently they discovered who the founder and inventor of Bitcoin was. Um, and it made big headline news, and it stirred up a lot of emotion and commotion inside the Bitcoin community, especially in the subreddits, okay? Because everybody that's involved with Bitcoin knows the truth, that Satoshi Nakamoto is not the real name of the inventor. And the only thing that this uh, uh, fake journalist, uh, Leah Goodman, did was she went and found somebody in California by the name of Satoshi Nakamoto, and who had the name Satoshi Nakamoto in his name, and she claimed that that was him. Now, that is very stupid, and that's very moronic, and that's why I call her a fake journalist, right? She might have been a journalist. She might have been on TV and, and on Russia Today and everything, you know, but after reporting on this fake journalist, what I would do is I would recommend that Leah Goodman quit being a journalist, okay? She's not good at it. She's not accurate in her reporting, okay? Um, the people that's in the Bitcoin community, such as Mad Bitcoins or the uh, Bitcoin channel, uh, Brother John uh, F. at the Bitcoin channel, or the uh, awesome uh, James D'Angelo from the World Bitcoin Network, we got the people from the Bitcoin Talk Group. We got Andreas Antonopoulos and Adam Levine and Stephanie Murphy from uh, Let's Talk Bitcoin. These are the people that I would trust and rely on to provide worthwhile and truthful uh, Bitcoin news. 
okay? Um, I would never trust someone like Leah Goodman or someone at Newsweek or Time Magazine or Bloomberg or none of the big media houses simply because they just don't understand the Bitcoin technology and the Bitcoin revolution, right? Uh, keep in mind that everybody, everybody that knows anything about Bitcoin knows that there are only two ways to verify who Satoshi Nakamoto is, okay? And in case you guys are new to Bitcoin and you don't know these authentication methods, let me share them with you, okay? Since um, the biggest owner of Bitcoin is Satoshi Nakamoto, and second, it's the U.S. government, the FBI, right? Um, Satoshi Nakamoto owns about 1.6 million Bitcoins, so that's a ton of money, okay? It's several hundreds of millions of dollars, all right? So when, in order for anyone to believe that a person who, if a person jumps out and claims to be Satoshi Nakamoto, the real Satoshi Nakamoto who invented Bitcoins, there's only two ways that he can verify that he is really Satoshi Nakamoto or she is really Satoshi Nakamoto, okay? And that would be one is to move or transfer one of those Bitcoins out of that 1.6 million because only Satoshi Nakamoto has the passwords and the private keys to transfer those funds. So the only way that anyone in the world would believe that the person who claims to be the real Satoshi Nakamoto is the real Satoshi Nakamoto would be to transfer one of those Bitcoins with his private key or with his password, all right? Now, the other way is to sign it with his uh, PGP email signature, his uh, uh, email key, all right? That would be another way uh, to, to, uh, to, um, to uh, verify that he or she is the real Satoshi Nakamoto and the real inventor of Bitcoins, okay? Otherwise, any other way, right, you can find an identity, a passport, a driver's license, a social security card or anything from someone uh, whose name is Satoshi Nakamoto, but no one is going to believe that that is the real Satoshi Nakamoto until they, that person transfers the Bitcoins. They don't have to transfer all 1.6 million of them. They just need to be able to transfer one of them. And that would be enough for the Bitcoin community and the rest of the world to be convinced that that person is the real Satoshi Nakamoto. Until this happens, uh, you can have a thousand fake reporters and a thousand fake journalists uh, claim that they found the real Satoshi Nakamoto, but no one's going to believe that. And it's just a joke. It's embarrassing, okay? And for her to, uh, to claim that she used, uh, uh, for Leah Goodman to claim that she used MIT to help her do the investigation and, and do all this, it's just a bunch of garbage, okay? Because uh, uh, anybody that goes to MIT, which is one of the most prestigious math and science school in America uh, that, uh, that understands uh, public key encryption or understands uh, Bitcoin would know that just because someone's name is Satoshi Nakamoto does not make them so, uh, Satoshi Nakamoto. So the fact that she is using, uh, uh, throwing out the fact that she used people at MIT, to me that is just an embarrassment to the school and uh, I don't recommend that she do that, okay? And, um, and uh, if I was MIT or Newsweek or anybody else, or even the family of, Sat uh, of Dorian Satoshi Nakamoto, the guy that was falsely accused of being the uh, Bitcoin inventor, uh, I uh, they would probably seek legal action or sue Leah Goodman for defamation and causing uh, risk, defamation to the MIT school and causing danger and, and potential danger and risk to the life of uh, Dorian Satoshi Nakamoto. The reason why is because if people don't know, she published, uh, um, she unprofessionally published his uh, house address, the picture of his house, the picture of him, and then uh, his address, his street address, his car, his driver's, uh, his license plate and everything. And if we had some real uh, people who really wanted to hurt Dorian Satoshi Nakamoto, uh, thinking that he was the real Satoshi Nakamoto, they could have easily kidnapped him or do something to force him to give up his passwords for that, you know, hundreds of millions of dollars in Bitcoin. So that was very unprofessional of her to do that. 
and it was very stupid of her to do that. And I would never, never, ever trust anything that Leah, any words or anything that comes out of Leah Goodman's mouth after this bogus story about discovering the, uh, the uh, uh, inventor of Bitcoin, okay? So why are they doing this? Why is she doing this? And why is uh, Newsweek doing this? Like I mentioned earlier in the video, um, according to the internet, okay, Newsweek is failing. Why? Because they are trying to charge three, four, five dollars for their magazine before when you can get it for free in digital format online, okay, or cheaper online. So now with all the people that can uh, tweet and can use Facebook and use social media and the internet and YouTube to broadcast, uh, being a Newsweek journalist does not mean anything anymore. Being a Bloomberg or CNN journalist, it means nothing. The only thing that means anything on the internet now is if you have credibility. That is the most powerful currency that anyone can have in today's, in the age of the internet, okay? So for the rest of her life, Leah Goodman will be known as a fake journalist uh, and a sensationalist, and she's just a tabloid writer. Um, she should quit Newsweek and go work at the uh, World Weekly News or one of those lousy, cheap tabloid magazines that, you know, um, the Enquirer or, or some, uh, you know, BS magazine like that, okay? And Newsweek, uh, IBT Media, made a huge uh, 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 bad decision to hire her and to use her to story to relaunch the physical edition of Newsweek magazine. And I hope they fail miserably for this, okay? And that nobody tries to bail them out, the governments or nobody, okay? Anytime a business screws up and they screw over their customers like Newsweek did, okay, uh, by issuing a false story that they blatantly know is false, and then the editor-in-chief um, sits there and tries to deny it and tries to back up Leah Goodman saying that, it's a, a, that they had credible evidence. If you did some research on Bitcoin, you would know that the only way to prove that someone is Satoshi Nakamoto, the inventor of Bitcoin, is through his private key or through his uh, a PGP uh, signature, okay, his email signature. And that's the only way. Any other way is just bogus. So why would you come out and relaunch a new magazine and try to get the public's attention and, and print something stupid like that, okay? You know, that's no different than the Enquirer or some tabloid magazine or newspaper printing stories about Brad Pitt or, or J-Lo or something, okay? It's just retarded, right? So I hope that Newsweek goes out of business uh, thanks to this story, okay? Um, you know, not everything is bad, you know. The, uh, the uh, Chinese character for uh, crisis is made up of two characters, okay? Uh, one character means uh, a danger, and the other, uh, the other character means opportunity, okay? So during this crisis uh, with Newsweek, let's look at the opportunities that's available, okay? What people don't realize is whether you put out negative or positive press, or media attention about Bitcoin, the fact that you even talk about it encourages the growth of Bitcoins. And as much as the governments and the banks want to ban Bitcoin, the more they talk about it and the more they bring it to the attention, just brings more adopters and new users to Bitcoin. And what happens to that? Since Bitcoin only has the, uh, a set number of, current, uh, of uh, units of 21 million that will ever be minted, the, every time a new user enters the Bitcoin world or the Bitcoin community or the Bitcoin network, it automatically increases the value of Bitcoin. So um, the positive thing that we can look at this is uh, uh, besides the fact that uh, everybody now knows that Leah Goodman is a fake journalist and a bogus journalist and can never be trusted, we have, uh, thanks to her, we have actually brought more attention to Bitcoin, okay? So anytime the media tries to sensationalize and, and talk nonsense about Bitcoin, it only increases the value of it and it only increases the awareness. Remember, uh, Bitcoin is not promoted by the central banks, it's not promoted by the government, it's not promoted by the Federal Reserve, okay? So the fact that Bloomberg, CNN, Newsweek, and all these uh, uh, Fox News and all these uh, CNBC and all these, you know, um, unreliable news sources 
talk about this, then the better it is for the Bitcoin community. So I invite you know more people to go out there and uh, 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 Newsweek, Time, any of these big media companies. I invite them to write more bogus stories because all that it's going to do, they think that it's going to hurt Bitcoin. They think that that uh, 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 that they're sensationalizing uh, and, and trying to grow their business. But the only thing that they're doing is they're bringing more attention to Bitcoin and the Bitcoin community. So um, I hope that this video helps you guys uh, understand uh, that the two ways to identify the real Satoshi Nakamoto. And oh, by the way, on on his uh, there was a his uh, on uh, the original uh, I think uh, P to P uh, peer to peer uh, currency blog that originally belonged to Satoshi Nakamoto. Apparently, uh, he made a comment. Um, that he did, uh, that he was, he uh, he claimed that he was not Dorian Nakamoto. Okay, and my belief is that that blog account has been hacked, and that was not a comment made made by the real Satoshi Nakamoto. Okay, um, the by the way, the only time that I believe that the real Satoshi Nakamoto will ever appear or make an appearance is. Uh, not anytime soon, okay? Bitcoin is growing and there's new users and adopters every day. There's no need for him to appear. And he does not want to be uh, the target of a government investigation or anything like that. Uh, I predict that in the future, um, when there is a serious, serious problem with Bitcoin where a huge decision has to be made on it, I think that at that time is when he will probably appear. And when the real Satoshi Nakamoto appears, right, um, he will transfer some of those Bitcoins that he owns to verify who he is or send his uh, 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 a message out that includes his encrypted PGP signature so that everyone in the Bitcoin community can verify and authenticate that he is the real Satoshi Nakamoto. Okay? So until those two things happen, um, just ignore all the bogus stories from all the bogus and fake journalists such as Leah McGrath Goodman, okay, and focus on the real people um, who, uh, um, who give you uh, news about uh, Bitcoins such as Mad Bitcoins, such as Let's Talk Bitcoins, such as uh, uh, Brother John F. at, uh, at the Bitcoin channel. Or such as um, the, uh, uh, the Bitcoin Talk Group, uh, and those are the people that you need to trust when it comes to talking about Bitcoin, not these other numb nuts, okay? Like uh, Leah Goodman. Uh, thank you for watching this video, and if you like to uh, support our efforts, uh, freedom efforts, um, you're welcome to donate to our uh, freedom fund at prisonorfreedom.com/donations, and I'll be ex happy to accept any. Uh, donations uh, in bitcoins or any of the other altcoins that I have listed there. Until next time, uh, have a great day.